Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Surround us. Ancient houses where ancient whispers never die out. Evil lands where the light of reason vanishes. But the most horrifying of all lies deep inside of us. Few of us dare look into our minds and hearts and souls. And when we do, we find it more than we can bear. This is essentially what happens in this tale of Joseph Compertino, a young man who looked into the souls of others only to find destruction. I don't need your help, Father. I think you do. You told me how much you loved our Savior and St. Joseph. You're not appealing to them now, are you? I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. The incense, the magic circle on the floor, the cabalistic figures. You're reaching for the hand. What if I am? What good did my piety do? I lost my parents, then Effie. Perhaps I'll get some help now. From Satan? You don't want his help. He doesn't share. He possesses. I want revenge, Father. I want to see the man who killed Effie suffer as I am. I want to see him in the same kind of torture. He is, Joe. Believe me, he is in torture. Our mystery drama, The Horror Within, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Milt Wissoff and stars Don Scardino. I'll be back shortly. With Act One. It has been said that a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. In our weird tale, the journey of a thousand horrors starts in the light of day in a most prosaic fashion. Joe Compertino, who has been orphaned, is on his way to visit his uncle in the city. He waits in a diner for a truck driver to finish his meal. Have something to eat, Joe. I'm not hungry. Well, how about a sandwich or some soup? Hey, it's chowder. It's nice and thin. No, Effie, I don't want any. I've got to save the little money I have. It's a long trip. Oh, I wish I were going, too. Any place is better than this. Oh, it's not a bad town, Joe. The people don't mean any harm. Oh, sure, they don't mean any harm. Calling me a nut all the time, making fun oh, of now, me. Oh, now, relax, Joe. You're getting excited again. Well, I guess you're right. They're not worth it. I wish you were coming along. Yeah, but what would your uncle say? I don't know. I only saw Uncle Pietro once when I was a kid. He came to visit. Oh, hey, look, Joe, that truck driver is getting ready to leave. Oh, okay, I guess I'd better... Yeah, sure. Sure, you better go. All right, Effie. Yeah. And thanks for getting me the ride. You ready, kid? Let's go. There she is, the pride of the Manchester fleet. Hop in. How far did you say you were going? Elk City. Why? My uncle lives there. Well, what about your folks? Well, they're both... they're both dead. Oh, hey, I'm sorry. Uh, you gonna stay with your uncle? I don't know. Sure you will. Blood's thicker than water, right? And God makes brothers of us all. Well, I don't know if I go that far. Oh, but it's true. God is everything. He creates life. And takes it away. Don't say that. All right, come off it, kid. I was just kidding. I believe in God. Do you really believe in him? Do you have so much faith that you can feel him close to you? Oh, well, uh... I do. When I concentrate, I can almost feel as if I'm one with him. He makes me see things. Look, kid, maybe you better get some shut-eye, huh? We got a ways to go yet. I see things happen halfway across the world. Wars, plane crashes, floods. They all come true. Hey, yeah, sure. Uh, you want some coffee? That farm is... No, thanks. This is a fast day for me. Like my namesake, St. Joseph. 
It helps me focus my concentration so I can do what I want to do. Like what? Move things without touching them. <laughs> hey, you'll be great in my business. You can offload this truck by yourself. And like St. Joseph, I can fly. Fly? Yes. The Lord gives me these powers. Look, dummy. I gave you a ride against company regulations because I felt sorry for you. Jenny told me you were a nut, but I said, what the heck? But I ain't going to stand for that kind of talk. I'm a church-going Christian, and I don't stand for no blasphemy. Get your butt out of here. You'll regret this. Sure, sure, just beat it. Take my advice. See you shrink. Lord, make him see the true light. Lead him from transgression. Joseph. Joseph Compertino, Uncle Pietro. Peter, kid. Pete Compton. Don't you forget it. What are you doing here? You're the only one I have left. What? Papa. He's dead. A fire in the house. Oh, good Lord. Why didn't you let me know? It happened so suddenly, and there wasn't much left for a funeral. I just buried him in... Oh, you poor kid. Yeah. How about something to eat? No. It's a fast day. Well, you take after your mother. What's wrong with that? Nothing, kid. Nothing. Don't have to jump down my throat. She was a saint. I learned a great deal from my mother. About sin and, and worldliness. Well, what are we going to do about you? Just give me a job and a place to stay. That's all I need. Yeah, I suppose I could use you around the club... You could clean the place, run sandwiches and coffee for the poker players. Poker players? Sure. What'd you think this is, a church? I run a little club here where the guys can get together for a little fun. Got any objections? No, Uncle Pietro. Pete. Call me Pete, I told you. I'm sorry, Pete. I mean no harm. Sure, kid. Now, uh, let me see. Where can you stay? I can't put you up at the house. I haven't got any room. I, I could stay here. It would make it easier for me to keep the place clean. In that case, make yourself at home. Well, how do you like it? The club is crowded. So many men. That's a big night. Friday, payday. Guys want to blow off a little steam. You know how it is. You work in the mill all week. It's a grind. They need something to take the taste out of their mouths. They can find comfort in the Lord. Sure, but now they need action. A little gambling's a lot better than uh, some things they could be doing, huh? Hey, <laughs> hey, where's the beer? Here, Joe, take this order to the table. Move. Uh, but what do you call this jerk, huh? A hamburger. No, kid. Well, I am glad you told me. I never know. Hey, what do you know, fellas? It's a hamburger. Is <laughs> <laughs> hey, something wrong, Ali? Nah, nah, nothing much. Just that I ordered a cold cut hero when I get a hamburger. No, no, he said a hamburger. Who asked you? Look, Ollie, the kid's new. I'll get you a hero. On the house. No, no, no. Forget it, forget it, forget about it. Hamburger's okay. Hey, uh, just watch him, will you? I think he ain't got all his marbles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch yourself, Joe. Just be a little more careful in the future. He's the one that should be more careful. Not me. Hey, Pete. Get a load of this, will you? Hey. <laughs> Look at my whole card. That's not bad, huh? Well, suckers, it's going to cost you plenty to see what Pete saw. Now, raise the pot that's on the table, huh? Hey. <laughs> yes. Oh, the only one with guts. Okay. Here they are, brethren. Five little hearts. Four through eight. Straight flush pal. <laughs> They're not all hearts, Sully. Your whole card is a diamond. Ah, you crazy... It's four of hearts, I take. Hey, who switched cards? Oh, it's you, you, you little punk, you bird brain. You must have done it when you were setting the sandwiches. Come on, Ollie. No, the come kid never on. touched the card. I'm going to take you apart, squirt boy. You're going to be on. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on, stop it. Come on. Ollie. 
wrong with you? It's him. Get rid of him, Pete. Oh. Take it easy, Ollie. You're going to be all right. Hey, get a doctor. Somebody get an ambulance. It's too late, Pete. He's dead. <laughs> I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. It's crazy. He it. thought you had something to do with it. I didn't harm him, Pete. I swear I didn't. I, I wouldn't take a life. Relax, Joe. I know you didn't. The excitement was just too much. Funny about that card, though. It wasn't like Ollie to pluck everything down on a four-flush. I had nothing to do with his death. Yeah, I know. What's eating you, kid? Come on, spill it. I'm the only family you got. Nothing. Just nothing. Okay, don't tell me. I don't give a damn. Well, don't be angry, Uncle Pietro. Uh, Pete, I wonder sometimes... What? Why nobody likes me. Lots of people do. Who? I like you, that's who. I, I want people to say nice things to me. And you got to learn to give and take. Besides, you keep saying wild things all the time about your powers. Oh, they're not my powers. They're the Lord's. You see what I mean? But it's true. I'm his vessel. We all are. He, he pours his powers into all of us, but only a few like me can retain them. But how do you do it? With faith and deep concentration. You really believe that? Well, of course I do. And so should you. Never lose faith. If you do, you will never have any hope. Swell. Let's wrap it up and go home. You've used that brush on the floor long enough. Save some of it for tomorrow. You really think that you can... I know it. Let me show you. Oh, hold on. Before you deal the cards, let me cut the deck. It makes no difference. Okay, if it makes no difference, let me cut. All right, I'm going to deal five cards face down. We'll both call them. And if you don't call as many as I do, then you promise to lay off? I promise. Well, go ahead, cut. That one. It's the Queen of Spades. No, Peter. It's the Ten of Hearts. Turn it over. Uh, you made a lucky hit. I'll try it again. Four clubs. Nope. Eight of diamonds. That's two in a row. Still believe it's luck? Let me see that deck. I know every kind of marked deck... You're just wasting your time. You open the deck. You know it's legitimate. Uh, why am I bothering with... Let's knock it off for tonight. Tomorrow's... Here, day. watch this. Nine of spades. Jack of hearts. And, uh, uh... Three of diamonds. Ah, it's a two of diamonds. All right, four out of five isn't bad, is it, Pete? Um, it's not bad at all. Yeah. I don't know what the trick is. We could sure clean up with it. No, I don't use my powers for profit. Who's asking you to? You can do an act. Amuse the customers when they get tired of playing. You sit in as a dealer for the house, and when things get dull, you do your stuff. Yeah, they'll get a kick out of it. I don't like to use my powers lightly. Do you want to keep on eating? Okay, okay, forget it. Well, just this once, Pete. But don't ask me again. <laughs> A deal has been made between Joe and his Uncle Peter. It seems so simple and so innocent on the surface. But like most seemingly simple matters, who knows what currents and eddies swirl beneath the surface. We will, I trust, know more when we return shortly with Act Two. that small compromises can lead to large disasters. The pretty lady verging on plumpness who diets with might and main to keep her poundage down knows full well that one excursion into the land of calories can mean a plunge into the worlds of pounds. Shall we then wonder that Joseph's consent to turn his powers to profits for his uncle will inevitably result in the loss of of all he holds dear? We shall see as we return now to Act Two of The Horror Within. 
That was great, kid. The suckers loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Handelman would have a fit when you called his whole card. He thought I was cheating, <laughs> using a marked deck. He wouldn't believe me even when I told him to pick any deck. Well, don't worry about it. That's oh. just his way. Come on, let's go back to the kitchen. You got a surprise for me? That's right. I don't mind doing the dishes. I hope you can't read everything I'm thinking. I don't try. Good. Joseph. Effie. How about that, kid? You didn't get the whole message. Uh, what are you doing here? Well, your uncle, he, he said I could work here. Sure, why not? Business is good. We need another hand. I figured since you and Effie used to get along so well oh, by thank home. Thank you, Uncle. Uh, Pete. Forget it. Just make sure you get the dishes done before we close. Huh? <laughs> I've been uh, looking for the cleanser. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll do it. You just sit right there. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll wash. You dry. Are you sure? Well, of course. There's no one to earn my way. Boy, your uncle's a fine man. No, he is. Even though he blows his top sometimes. Yeah, I suppose you don't. Joe? You still do tricks? Oh, they're not tricks, Effie. I followed the example of my patron saint, St. Joseph. And I concentrate my powers like he did. Watch. This knife. Yeah. Hold it in your hands. Yeah. Okay, now keep still. Very, very still. <gasps> Joseph, it's getting warm. Mm hmm. It's bending. There. Oh! Hey, that's wonderful. That's just like a magician I saw once. It's, it's not magic, Effie. It's a natural power. I read somewhere that most of us use only a small portion of our brain potential, but less than 5%. You mean that anyone can do what, what you just did? Sure, most people can. I'm sure of it. Oh, hey, Joe, will you teach me? Will you show me how you did that? If you want to, I can show you that and much more. Like what? Well, I hear what I have in my mind without my saying a word. That'd be me. We could talk and nobody would hear us. I could show you how to move objects from across the room. We could clean up from here. I could even teach you how to fly. Yeah, like Peter Pan. Hey, look, I'm flying. Hey, you mustn't joke about it, Effie. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, Joseph. Listen, I wasn't making fun of you. I, I was just happy. Never make fun of me, Effie. You're frightening me. It's all over now. Let's Let's finish the dishes. I promise, Joseph. I'll never do it again. Well, how do you like it? Oh, it looks beautiful, Pete. Just beautiful. I mean, I can't believe it's the same cloud. Nothing to it, Effie. Fake bricks. <laughs> Tile ceilings and a few yards of drapes. Oh, it didn't cost much to change from poker to a supper club. But do you think it's wise? Look at the mob. The joint's packed. People are dressed so nice, too. Hey, maybe we ought to pitch in and help, huh? No, nothing doing. Now, you and Joe are my star attraction. Well... Now, you do the act like I've seen it, and we can't miss. But that was just for Effie and me, Pete. I, I don't want to perform. Well, not in front of all these people. Are you scared, kid? Well, that's natural. Everybody gets stage fright. No, no, it's not that. I told you before, my powers are between me and St. Joseph. I can't do it for money. What's the difference if you do it in the back room or out here? Well, he's right, Joe. You can't hurt anybody with a little fun. A little pleasure can help brighten up people's lives. That's you, Joe. What do you say? I'm going to introduce you and Effie. If you want to let me down, that's up to you. And now, folks, settle back. I hope you enjoyed your dinner. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Roast beef was good. Good, good. The Cafe Compton presents its star attraction, the amazing Joseph and Company. They'll entertain you with an act never duplicated before in the history of the entertainment world. They'll read your thoughts, perform illusions, and here they are, the amazing Joseph and Company. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My assistant will be seated on the stage as I go through the audience. She will receive the thoughts I send to her across space. You can give me any kind of message or clue, and I will transmit it to her. I am in touch with a lady who has a question. Is her name Cindy? 
That is correct. She wants to know if you can tell her what color dress she is wearing. She is wearing a blue gown with sequins. It is a size 8, I believe. Just, just the color was enough. All right, uh, you, sir, may I have your note? Thank you. Uh, this gentleman wants to know if his partner is cheating on him. Uh... Your wife is perfectly faithful, sir. <laughs> well, I don't think that's what he meant, but I'm sure he's happy with the answer. Uh, one more question, please. One more question, please. Yes. This man wants... He wants to know... Mr. Handelman, I can read a, a great many thoughts in your mind. Your check is $28.90, and you want to know if a $2 tip is enough. It is not. <laughs> Joe, you were great tonight. Just great. Everybody loved your act. Hey, I better get that front now and help close the place down. Now, we'll have a bite to eat later, okay? Sure, Pete. That Handelman. I hate him. I know, Joey. Listen, you frightened me. And that's why I made a joke out of it. Uh, Joe, you wouldn't... No, no, of course not. I'm a servant of the Lord. I do His bidding. That's why I wonder about all this. I, I feel it's wrong. It's a lot better than what you wanted to do to handle me. Joe... You think you could really do what you... If God wills it. Oh, well, then you never will, because he preached love. It's hard for me to feel love for someone who... How about me? I love you, Effie. With all my heart, I love you. Well, then let's get married, Joe. Yeah, yeah let's, let's get married tonight. Tonight? But how can we? We'll go to Rapid Falls. There's a justice of the peace there. No, no, get... Effie, no. We'll wait and get married properly. In a church, by a priest. Well, if that's the way you want it, Joe, but let's do it soon. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you want to marry me in such haste. Yes, Joe, please, let's get married as soon as possible. Well, that sounds more like desperation than well, romance. I can't explain it, Joe, but I don't know, I feel well, like something terrible is going to happen. I want to be your wife, Joe. I want us to be together for the rest of our life. No matter how much time we have left. Good evening, Father. Am I late? No, no. You're the first one here, Mr. Compton. We have lots of time for the rehearsal. Is your nephew's family coming, too? Well, I am his family. All that's left of it. And the bride-to-be? She has no one else but Joe and me, Father. I wonder what's keeping them. No, oh, here comes the young man now. Joe, where you been? I called for Effie, and she wasn't there. Is she here? Well, no. Don't worry. She'll be along in a minute. Probably has something to do. No, it's not that. What is it? I can see her. She's walking past the library... And someone is stopping her. She... She's frightened. I must go to her. What was that all about? Uh, Joe, my nephew. He's not like other people. He, uh... He feels things. Sees things. Uh, better call the police, Father. May I? Oh, certainly. If you feel it's necessary. <laughs> Effie's gone. They'll find her, Joe. Just take it easy. You don't understand. Sure I do. You're upset. Now, come on inside the house. We'll have a cup of tea. He's right, Joe. There's nothing you can do now. The police are searching the town. I can't help. I feel so useless. I've got no contact with her. I can't reach her. She must need me. Don't even think about it, Joe. Just come inside and rest. 
We'll wait with you. You may have been wrong, Joe. I mean, about what you think you saw. I didn't think I saw Pete. I know I did. She was in trouble, I tell you. And now, nothing. There was no sign of struggle at the library. No one witnessed anything. You don't believe in me. Should I? Yes, I have the powers given me by the Lord. You are his servant, too. Are you sure your powers are from the Lord, Joe? As sure as I am that my name is Joseph, I have devoted my life to him and the ideals of St. Joseph, and I have been heard. Explain it to me, my son. Why? So you can laugh at me? No. I want to help you. Help me. Yes, Father, help me. Then go on. My mother was a saint. She taught me to worship, to revere the memory of St. Joseph, to follow in his footsteps. I tried. I poured all my energies into being one with St. Joseph. I learned how to direct all the forces of my mind and soul. E even when I was very young, I could make objects move. I could see things that happened far away. Then one day she was gone and I was bitter. That's understandable. Well, for a while, I used my powers for, for wicked things. People turned against me and I became an outcast. Even my father drew away from me. Then my father was taken from me. I saw the light. I heard the blessed voice of St. Joseph and he told me to return. And you're sure the voice you heard was St. Joseph's? Well, of course. Well, who else could it have been? Who else, Joseph? No, Father, no. The voice did not come from within me. Joseph, there are forces of good and evil in the world. And sometimes it's difficult to tell one from the other. Perhaps it was not the voice of heaven you heard. Good house tonight. Oh, we're still mobbed. Why don't you get dressed, Joe? In a minute. Any news yet about Effie? Not a word. The cops are still on the lookout, but they haven't found anything. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I told them where it happened and exactly what he looked like. Well, there must be hundreds of guys in town that fit the description you gave. you got to understand. I don't want to understand. I want to find Effie. I tell you, Pete, I saw her just as clearly as I see you now. She was walking by the library, and this guy passes her. And he turns back. Joe, the cops know all that. Well, then why don't they find her? Hello. Speaking. What's that? I see. Sure, sure, I understand. Uh, no, he's here with me. Yeah, we'll be done. What is it, Pete? It's Effie, isn't it? Yes, Joe. The cops. They found Effie. Well, is she... Is she all right? Bad news, kid. I want to see her. You will, kid. They want us to identify her. Identify her? What are you saying, Pete? They're waiting for us. At the morgue. <laughs> feared when Joe agreed to do his act at Peter Compton's club has come to pass. Effie is dead at the hands of a madman, and Joseph Compertino says he was a witness to what happened. It hardly seems possible, but then again, I'm sure you will agree, the impossible is becoming the usual with greater frequency these days. We'll know more when we return shortly with Act Three. killed Effie, Joe must make the journey we all fear. He must look deep inside himself and trace the murderer in his mind's eye. The problem is, 
What more will he uncover? For if you look into any man's heart and mind, you will always find at least one black spot which he has tried to keep concealed. Why are we sitting here, Pete? Because the lieutenant asked us to wait. He'll be back in a minute. She looks so different, Pete. Like a poor imitation. Don't think about it, Joe. I can't think of anything else. I've got to find the man who did it. I'll never rest until I find him. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I had to check a few things out. It's all right, Lieutenant. Now, Joe, uh, you don't mind if I call you that? No. Good. Uh, when did you see this taking place? Well, Pete and I were at the church waiting for Effie mm -hmm. when it flooded my mind. What time was that? It was about 6.30, 7. I see. And uh, was that the time you felt it was actually happening? I guess so. I, I hadn't thought about it. Well, think about it. With the street lights on? Do you remember anything that uh, might give us a handle? Well, it seems... Well, the library was closed, but the street lights weren't turned on. And I would put it at about 5.30. But uh, you saw it happen in your mind about an hour or so later. Huh? Uh, can you explain that? No, I, I can't. Well, did you actually see them go off together? Did they get into a car? No. Well, I mean, I don't remember. All I know is I can see them together, mm -hmm. and I knew something bad was going to happen. What's this all about, Lieutenant? Well, I'm just trying to get things straight. You know, there are some loose ends here. Like what? Well, for one thing, we found the body off Highway 50. That means she was in a car when she died. No, it means she was in a car when she was thrown off on the side of the road. She died hours before then. You mean to say she was thrown out in the middle of the day and no one saw it? Oh, it wasn't in the middle of the day. Doc Hadfield estimates she died about 6 o'clock in the morning. Well, with this new daylight savings time, it must have been pitch black when he... Uh, That's right. That means, Joe, your mind's clock was off about 12 hours. You couldn't have seen her walk past the library when you said she did. I can't believe it. Joe, didn't you talk to Effie today? No. But she said she was going to the city to do some shopping. She said she'd be away all day and meet us at the church for the rehearsal. But you called her? Just before I left to meet Pete. I wanted to see if she got back earlier. And she wasn't there, obviously. Now, who answered the phone? Nobody. Where were you early this morning? In bed. Asleep. Say, what's going on? Well, Why all these questions? Every little bit of information helps. I... I, I don't like it. Can I go now? Ah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, just stay around where we can reach you, Joe. We may have some more information later and maybe some more questions. Joe? Joe, open up. Were you asleep? No, I was just thinking. Did you eat anything today? Yeah. I'll bet. You haven't moved out of your room for days. I'm sorry about the club, Peter. That doesn't matter, kid. But it's all my fault. Forget it. I've got no future without Effie. You cooking something, kid? No. It's funny. I smell something burning. Oh, it's uh, incense. Oh, you're not going through that again, Joe. Forget that stuff, kid. That's not going to bring Effie back. No, but it will put me in contact with her murderer. Don't do it, Joe. It's not right. I spoke to Father Coyle about it. You had no right. He says you're literally playing with fire. He doesn't understand either. Why don't you explain it to him? Let him help. I'm not leaving here until I see things clearly. You don't have to. I brought Father Coyle with me. Uh, you can come in now, Father. Are you, Joe? I don't want you here, Father. Your uncle asked me to help. I don't need your help. I think you do. You told me how much you loved our Savior and St. Joseph. You're not appealing to them now, are you? I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do, Joe. The incense, the magic circle on the floor, the Kabbalistic figures... You're reaching for the hand... Oh, I what if I am? What good did piety do? I lost my parents. 
Then Effie, perhaps I'll get some help now. From Satan? You don't want his help. He doesn't share. He possesses. I don't give a damn if he swallows me whole. I want my revenge, Father. I want to see the man who killed Effie suffer as I am. I want to see him in the same kind of torture. He is, Joe. Believe me, he is. and memory gimmicks. I'm going to attempt something never seen before on any stage, but I'll need your assistance since I do not have... well, since I'm working alone tonight. With your help, I'm going to reach into your minds and read your thoughts. And if you have a problem, concentrate on it. With divine guidance, I will resolve them for you, if there are any answers. All I ask of you is quiet, complete silence. Remember, if you have a question, concentrate on it. You're doing fine. I see thoughts swirling in space. Is there a young lady whose initials are J.L. in the room? Hey, that's me! Good, good. Would you please stand up? <clears throat> now, concentrate on your questions. Uh, yeah, I see a ticket in your purse. Would you hold it up, please? Thank you. Well, what you... Now that's an airline ticket to Las Vegas. Am I correct, please? My advice is follow your mind, miss. Don't use that ticket. Wait until you can pay your way. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hold it, folks. I have I have another message. Another message coming through. Uh, jo jo uh, George, George. I can't tell whether your last initial is. B or V? George, will you stand up, please? Well, I have good news for you, George. You can stop worrying about your mother. It's not what you think at all. Her pains will disappear soon, and she'll be as good as new. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, the signals are fading, folks. I want you to let your minds go blank. There. That's it. I feel it coming through now. There's a dark thought taking form. Evil. Malignant. 
You're coming through now. I read you loud and clear. Will the man with the mark of Cain upon him stand up? I don't blame you for hiding. You've committed a terrible sin. There's only one way out for you. The Bible says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and a life for a life. Stop it, Joseph! I called for silence. What you're doing is wrong! He must pay for his crime, Father. It's not for you to judge, Joseph. Don't try to play God. I am his instrument. Are you sure, my son? Look into your own soul. Judge not, lest ye shall be judged. I have nothing to fear. Nothing, Joe? Think about it. Where were you when Effie died? In my room. No, you weren't, Joe. Six o'clock in the morning, Joe. Where were you? She... She was wicked. She was everything my mother warned me about. I worshipped St. Joseph, and she laughed at my piety. She was carnal, and she tried to keep me from my vows of sanctity. St. Joseph, in your name... That's blasphemy, Trevor! I removed her from my life for your sake. I exercised her as though she were a cancer on my soul. Pray for forgiveness, Joe! I was tormented all night. I went to her early, and I begged her to leave me. She refused. I told her we would go to Father Coyle and ask for his guidance. She struggled in the car and tried to run away. I stopped her. She was like a, a bird in my arms. A poor dead bird. Come with me, Joe. Everything will be all right. Come. No. No, I must go with St. Joseph. What? I must... Give me the power, St. Joseph. Let me fly to you. Don't! Don't, Joe! Stay away from the window! What's happening? Look at that! I can't believe it. Look at him suspended in space. He's standing free. same time. And he stumbled somewhere in between. Don't take it too hard, Pete. Dead end somewhere. Yeah, but not on the streets. Do you really think he killed Effie? Yes. Part of him did. None of us are saints, Peter. We're good and evil intertwined. Most of us can keep the worst of our nature in control. Joe couldn't. He was split right down the middle. Well, one thing is sure. He paid his dues. Let's get him out of here and mark his account paid in full. The worst we feared has happened. Joe took the fearful chance of looking deep inside himself for truth and found that the truth was more than he could bear. I'll be back shortly. And so we close the entrance to the cave where murky waters run deep, but not always still. From time to time, we hear the evil rumble of the coursing stream, but we manage to ignore its babbling and save our sanity thereby. Joseph Compertino lost this snack that civilized man has developed, this veneer that hides some of the ugliness within. He paid dearly for it. Our cast included Don Scardino, Dolores Sutton, Joseph Julian, Robert Dryden, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. What does he see in oh, me? Oh, come on, honey. No, I mean it. Well, let's see. You're pretty. <laughs> well, I'm not beautiful. And you're smart. But I'm not brilliant. What can I tell you? 
He's an artist. All artists are crazy. But the most fascinating women in the world are ready to throw themselves at his feet. Sis, you're pretty fascinating yourself. <laughs> Thanks to you, Bert. Thanks to me? You sent me through college, and there were the trips to Europe. Well, I had to shape you up before I could marry you off. <laughs> It looks like you've got yourself a grand prize. The great Otis Manley Carter. Oh, Bert, I want you to like him. Oh, I like him. I like He's him. He's so sweet, so kind. Except. Except? What do you mean, except? Well, except every time he paints somebody's picture, it seems to me that person dies. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>